Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. A while ago, a friend of mine asked me to teach him how to make crepes, and so I came up with this recipe of shrimp-filled crepes, and we had so much fun making them and eating them that I decided this has to be done as a video. They're fancy, they're delicate, they're delicious. The ones that I make are a little bit small. I use seven inch crepes, which is more appropriate for a, an appetizer or a first course. But three of these would make a nice luncheon main course. I think they're, they're wonderful. I think I love to eat these things. So let me get into first the ingredients that I'm gonna be using for making my shrimp filled crepes today. To make about 18 crepes, you're going to need one cup of cold water, that's 237 milliliters, and an equal amount, one cup of cold milk. Four large eggs, as far as what a large egg is, mine weigh between 1.9 and 2 ounces each, which is 54 to 57 grams. One half teaspoon salt, one half cup, one and a half cups, I'm sorry, of all-purpose flour, I always weigh my flour for recipes like this, so I've got eight ounces or 227 grams of flour, four tablespoons, which is one quarter cup or 59 milliliters of melted butter. For the bechamel, four tablespoons butter, four tablespoons flour, one half teaspoon white pepper, one half teaspoon ground nutmeg, and four cups of milk or 946 milliliters. And then finally for the filling, two tablespoons of butter, one clove of garlic, and what's missing is my shrimp, about two pounds or 900 grams of fresh shrimp. After I make my batter for my crepes, I'm gonna go shopping and buy my, my, my shrimp. Now, if you're looking at my ingredients and the numbers don't look right, I'm gonna make about half the portion here. I'm gonna make about nine crepes, so I'm only gonna use a pound of, of shrimp. My first step here is to Combine my wet ingredients. So there are my eggs. Again, I'm making half a batch here. There's my salt. That'll help to break these eggs up a little bit. And one thing I'm seeing here, of course, is I'm whipping in a lot of air into this. My milk and my water. And therefore, when you make crepe batter, you want to let it sit afterwards for a good two to three hours. And there's a couple of reasons why. One is to allow the flour to absorb moisture because this is gonna come out kind of watery initially, but after it sits for a few hours, the flour will absorb moisture and it'll have a nice consistency. And put my butter in. I wanna whip this in because that cold milk is gonna solidify my butter. All right, and then start working in the flour. I'm gonna start off with about half of that first. So as I mentioned, you need to let this sit. One, to let the flour absorb moisture, but the other reason is because you're gonna be whipping air into this. And by letting it sit, that air will bubble to the surface over time and give you a smoother batter to get the kind of crepes you want. Give you a nice consistent homogeneous batter. Put the rest of my flour in.
Okay, now I have to whip this for a while, probably, I don't know, three or four minutes to make sure that I get all that flour broken up because I have flour lumps in there. But you can see that's kind of a wet, watery batter. That will change in consistency as it sits and that flour has time to absorb moisture. While I am waiting for my batter to sit for a couple of hours, I have gone shopping and bought my shrimp. And now I'm going to start my bechamel. My first step here is to cook the flour. So I've melted my butter over medium heat and reduced the heat now down to almost low. And I'm just going to cook this flour for about a minute. I just want to get rid of the pasty, raw flour flavor. This is what's called making a roux. Someone told me an expression from, I believe it's out of Cajun country, where they take a long time to make a dark roux. It's a, almost a black roux. And when something is long and complicated, they say, well, you know how it is. First, you got to make a roux. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to turn my heat off. I'm going to let that cool down for a few minutes before I put my nutmeg and pepper in there. And then I'll be ready to pour in the milk and start cooking this. Okay, I've put my black, my white pepper rather, and my ground nutmeg in there. Two cups of milk. I'm using two because again I'm making half a half a batch. I'm gonna bring my heat up to medium, medium high, and start heating this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. Reduce the heat to low, and then bring this grate in over, and then put this on top to raise it up off the heat. I'm going to switch to my spatula here. And then I'm going to stand here and stir this for 10 minutes. Right now, it's very watery. You can see how that just falls right off the spatula. I want to get this to a coats the spoon stage where you'll see a coating stay on this spatula. That'll be just thick enough. I don't want it real thick, like a gravy, but like a delicate sauce. Again, this is bechamel. I have been stirring this for 10 minutes. The timer went off. This is done. I want you to see the consistency of that now. Remember how quickly that ran off the spatula? Now I've got a nice coats a spoon texture to that. So what I need to do next to protect this, because this will develop a skin very quickly, I've got a little piece of plastic wrap here and what I'm going to do is very gently, so I don't burn myself, push this down so that it just comes into contact with the sauce and that will prevent it from developing a skin. Before I start making my crips here, I want you to see the texture of my batter. This now has had a chance to sit for over two hours. This is almost two and a half hours. And I've got this nice pancake batter texture to it. The bubbles are all out of it. So, I'm going to heat up my little crepe pan here over medium heat. And then I find that about a quarter cup, so I'm going to use this little quarter cup measure. Quarter cup measure is just perfect for this little seven inch pan. Okay, I think I've got my pan hot enough now. I'm 
put in my quarter cup of batter. And I'm just tilting this pan to get this batter all the way around the pan as round and even as possible. Beautiful. And then I'll let that cook until it starts to brown around the edge and that's a pretty good indicator that it's browning underneath. I'll check it, flip it over. I've got a plate over here with a piece of parchment paper on it that I'll move my crepes to. With my batter, I should get about nine of these crepes. I'm just starting to see some browning around the outside. Yes, that looks good. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? These cook very quickly because, again, the batter is so thin. I love this little pan. I've had it for probably 30 years. You can see how often I make crepes. It's still almost in perfect condition. And this is considered, by the way, the outside. When you go to fill them, you'll put the filling on this side because this is not the pretty side. Once this pan really gets warmed up, these cook very quickly. Okay, so I have the rest of these to make and then I'll be ready to start making, cooking my shrimp to do my filling. I've switched skillets here. I'm going to melt about two good tablespoons of butter in this pan. And while that's melting, I'm going to add my clove of garlic, crushed. That's the only flavoring that I'm going to add to my shrimp. Garlic and butter. And then here is my shrimp. I think I've already mentioned I've coarse chopped this. It's about a half of an inch chop. Again, because I don't want really lumpy crepes. I'm doing this over medium high heat. This will cook in two or three minutes. I am satisfied that that's pretty much cooked. I'm seeing a little bit of rawness around some edges there. It's really important you don't overcook shrimp because otherwise it'll get rubbery. So I'm going to turn the heat off. Just going to move this together into the center of the pan and just let the residual heat in that pan finish any cooking that still needs to be done. And then we'll be ready to start assembling our crepes. I have buttered a baking pan here and I came up with, ended up with 10 crepes. So I'm going to try to divide my stuffing here rather evenly between my 10 crepes. So I kind of made lines in this pan where I thought it might evenly portion these into 10. I put the filling on one side and then just roll this up. That's really all there is to it as far as rolling a crepe and place that in the baking pan. Going to zoom in and do another one. Okay, doing another one here. Put my shrimp filling on one side of it. Like so. And then just gently roll this up. And when you place this in the baking pan, put this bottom, this last rolled section, 
on the bottom. As I count these out, I did get nine of them, which is exactly what I figured I would get by using a quarter cup of my batter. So before these go into the oven, my oven has come up to temperature, and if I haven't mentioned it, I've heated the oven to 375 degrees. I'm gonna put some of my bechamel on my crepes before they go into the oven. I'm reserving some for garnishing afterwards. Oh, and I needed to mention that I did taste this bechamel for salt, and it needed salt a little bit, so I maybe added between a quarter and a half a teaspoon, probably closer to a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, so now these are going to bake uncovered in a 375 degree oven for only about 20 minutes. I just have to heat these up. They're already cooked. And there they are, fresh from the oven. You could, if you wanted to, put these under the broiler for a little bit just to brown the top. I don't think they need it. So I want to get these onto a plate, garnish it with some extra balsamella, or bechamel actually, and see how they taste. Okay, I'm going to put three of these on a plate, like so. I heated my bechamel, drizzle some of that over the top, and there you have it. Isn't that beautiful? Shrimp crepes. I am so looking forward to tasting this. I haven't made these in quite a while. I love shrimp. Oh, that is so good. It's got a delicate flavor to it. It's really nice and fancy. I would consider this appropriate for a special occasion, a luncheon. Three on a plate, I think, is fine for a main course, even though these are a little on the small side, being only seven inches, which is typical for a first course. But these are so good. Oh. Okay. Excuse me. I got to go enjoy my lunch. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.